What is going on wonderful people? This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense, continuing our playlist called Ever Wonder Why? Patients with tetralogy of flow squat and reverse the flow. Ever wonder why? So in the first video, we talked about why nagma is hyperchloremic. In the second video, we learned why nagma is normal chloremic. In the third video, I told you why the pain of duodenal ulcer actually improves on eating, unlike the pain of gastric ulcer, which gets worse when you eat. Video number four was the story of the low anion gap in cases of multiple myeloma. In video number five, I told you why Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome has some autonomic symptoms but myasthenia gravis does not have those autonomic symptoms. Something your woke professor can't seem to figure out. To understand tetralogy follow, let's first go back to square one and talk about normal physiology. Right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. The right ventricle will give you pulmonary trunk. Left ventricle will give you aorta. The right side has deoxygenated blood. The left side has oxygenated blood. And there is a lovely interventricular septum in between. Some foolish people think that tetralogy of Fallot are four anomalies, which is a bunch of nonsense. Tetralogy of Fallot is just one anomaly with four consequences. Just one freaking mistake with four results. What's that one mistake? The septum has shifted. What kind of septum? The interventricular septum has shifted this way to the right. And this will give you four consequences. Let's go. When the septum is shifted this way, what do you think is going to happen to the pulmonary trunk side? Oh, the pulmonary trunk is getting narrower. Pulmonic stenosis. That's number one. Okay, as a result of the pulmonic stenosis, the radius of this vessel decreases and the resistance increases and therefore the pressure increases. Now your right ventricle has to pump blood against a higher pressure than usual. Oh, oh, harder. Oh, as a result right ventricle will undergo hypertrophy. Similarly, when I go to the gym and train my muscles against resistance, my muscles get thicker. Same flipping concept. And that was number two. Number three, look at the septum. Oh, that's a bad septum. That's a bad boy. Some blood can escape from here to here because there is a gap now. And this is called ventricular septal defect. Moreover, now the aorta is overseeing two cavities and instead of just supervising the left ventricle now the aorta can actually engulf both ventricles we call this an overriding aorta once upon a time i went to a public bathroom and i found a morbidly obese person sitting on two toilets i just remembered the overriding aorta none of this actually happened in real life i'm just improvising Tetralogy of Fallot, one anomaly with four consequences. Don't believe me? I'm gonna prove it to you. P, pulmonic stenosis, causing to right ventricular hypertrophy. The O is the overriding aorta, and the V is a ventricular septal defect, giving you the classic holosystolic murmur at the left lower sternal border. Since you have a ventricular septal defect, and since the pressure on the right side is so high, thanks to the pulmonic stenosis, some blood is going to actually escape from the right side to the aorta. As you know, the right side has deoxygenated blood. Now we are mixing the deoxygenated blood with the oxygenated blood in the aorta, leaving the blood in the aorta less oxygenated than normal. That's why the baby is going to have cyanosis, blue baby. When the entire body of a neonate is blue, think of two things. It's either a respiratory disease or a cyanotic congenital heart disease. How the flip do I tell the difference? Easy. What's the function of the lung? To bring oxygen into the body. What's the function of the heart? To distribute that oxygen. Okay, so easy. You just give 100% oxygen. Oh, you're taking over the job of the lungs. If the patient improved, that was a lung disease. If there is no change, that's a cyanotic heart disease. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Why do patients with tetralogy of follow squat? Easy, because when you squat, you increase the afterload. What's the afterload? It's the load after the heart pumps. Okay, after you pump, boom, blood is leaving. The resistance that you will encounter here in the aorta is called the afterload. And when I squat, I increase the pressure in front of the heart. 
Now, from the perspective of the blood in the right ventricle, so imagine that we have a camera in the right ventricle here. All right, I am the deoxygenated blood. Now, in the good old days, I had an option to go here, pulmonary artery, or here, aorta, through the VSD. But now we have increased the afterload, it's harder for me to go to the aorta. The aorta is now a restricted area. So, I will go in my normal path to the pulmonary artery and then to the lungs, aka less shunting and therefore less cyanosis. That's why the baby squats. So when you see a baby who is cyanotic and then he squatted and the cyanosis went away, this is diagnostic of tetralogy of Fallot. But hey, medicosis, how come a baby knows how to increase the afterload and reverse the shunt? How did the baby become an expert on fluids and hemodynamics? The baby doesn't understand the mechanism. The baby does it by nature. Trial and error, baby. Similarly, your patients with pericarditis leans forward instead of leaning backwards because when you lean backwards, it hurts. So you lean forwards instead. Most of the time, the patient doesn't have a clue what the pericardium is. It's trial and error. A third story is the story of the patient with meningitis. Why do you think they tell you to turn the lights off? Are they trying to hide the incriminating evidence? for murdering the nurse? <laughs> Absolutely not. When you have meningitis, you have photophobia. It hurts when you look at light. So you ask the doctor to turn off the lights or to give you some shades. So quick review. In Tetralogy of Fallot, you have right to left shunt, blue babies. It's one of the cyanotic heart diseases. You don't believe me? I'm gonna prove it to you. Pulmonic stenosis causing right ventricular hypertrophy. The aorta is sitting on two ventricles overriding and you have a ventricular septal defect. The baby is gonna squat to decrease the cyanosis by reducing the shunting from the right ventricle to the left ventricle. But hey, medicosis, why do babies with tetralogy of Fallot have clubbing? Well, no one knows why, but I discussed one of the theories in my video called the clinical significance of the megakaryocyte. What the flip does the megakaryocyte have to do with clubbing? Well, watch and you'll see. Now let's review tetralogy of Fallot from Picmonic. Let's go. First of all, you have a blue baby. The acronym is PROOF. The P is pulmonic stenosis, stoned lungs. The R is right ventricular hypertrophy, right vent hypertrophy. You have an overriding aorta and you have a ventricular septal defect. Here's a vase with a defect. If you do a chest x-ray, you will see a boot-shaped heart. The treatment is to call the freaking pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon because we want to correct those cardiac defects. If you want to learn about cardiac pharmacology, check out my premium course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. You will learn about antiarrhythmics, antihyperlipidemics, antianginal, antihypertensive diuretics, and digoxin. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Go to Picmonic for animated medical mnemonics. Thanks for watching. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.